we resolved to create the free, sovereign, and independent state of New California. Should California be broken up into separate states? It's a question that's been discussed and debated many times before. And today, the latest group who feels that it should took the first steps to make their vision of California more of a reality. New at 6, CBS 13's Mark Thompson was in Marysville as the group declared their independence. Mark's in the newsroom now with more on this. Mark? Yeah, good evening. And the group is proposing to form what they hope will be the state of New California, basically separating rural counties from existing urban areas. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to seek a constitutional remedy to the abuse of powers. With the reading of their own version of a Declaration of Independence, founders of the state of New California took the first steps to what they hope will eventually lead to statehood. To be clear, they don't want to leave the United States. They want to expand it, becoming state number 51. But the question is, what is your problem with the current state of California? Well, it, it's been ungovernable for a long time. High taxes, uh, education, you name it. It's, it we're, we're rated really, I think, about 48th or 50th in the, from a business clim climate and standpoint in California. Here's what the state of New California would look like in blue, incorporating most of the state's rural counties and most of the state's land for that matter, leaving the urban coastal counties to the current state of California. There's something wrong when you have a rural county such as this when you, tr you go down to Orange County, which is mostly urban, and it's got the same set of problems. There's something that's causing that same set of problems, and it happens to be how the state is being governed and taxed. But unlike other separation movements in the past, the state of New California wants to do things by the book, citing Article 4, Section 3 of the Constitution and working with the state legislature to get it done, similar to the way West Virginia was formed. Yes, uh, we have to demonstrate we can govern ourselves before we're allowed to govern. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brown Logan, and today we got to talk about California. Now, you just saw that video about California trying to, you know, separate into two different states. Uh, New California, which is much of the inland regions, a lot of the more rural areas away from the coastal elite. And I didn't even really realize that, you know, that was just like the coast that was determining everything. Uh, L.A. and, of course, the Bay Area. I'm not really thinking about the coast because I'm thinking about East Coast and the cities along the East Coast, but not necessarily how California takes up so much space. And I mean, I put a map right here on the screen before you. I mean, look at how much space. California takes up of the West Coast compared to on the East Coast where I was in Virginia. You know, you got a lot of states right there. You got Virginia, um, South Carolina, I think even Georgia, Florida, once you go all the way down. And you have New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Maryland, uh, even D.C. to a certain extent because you're on the Potomac, which is right there in Chesapeake Bay, not that far from the coast. Um, you know, it's a lot of different states that – occupy what we know is the east coast but with california is not quite like that you have california taking up a lot of space just because you have one state does not mean that the entire state is in unison they're not all together and it does make sense to break it up now before i get into what they're talking about now with the new california separating away from the coastal elite san francisco bay area silicon valley la etc i just want to talk about the previous thing that was put out there by a guy named Tim Japer. I think that's his name. If I'm wrong about his name, please let me know in the comments below. But a Silicon Valley investor or whatever they wanted to call him, he had a map where he divvied up California into six states. And I'll put that map on the screen before you. Now, this map had the place called Jefferson, which is very popular among the Internet. So I've seen some of the Jefferson flags and stuff in the area to the north of California, way above Silicon Valley and all of that. And then you got South California. Uh, I think it was East California, Central California, Silicon Valley, places like that. That made sense because each of these regions pretty much have their own interests. And the state of California is really too big and it makes sense to go ahead and break it up especially for people that live in places like Orange County. Now, Orange County, I think, should definitely be included into the new California or just a different state because look at the terrible conditions that Orange County is in. 
I mean, when I saw this video on Facebook, which is playing right now on the screen before you, I was shocked. I was totally shocked to know that this is America, that this is California, Orange County. You're not talking about it being that far away from Los Angeles County. OK, so I was really shocked to see this gigantic tent city. And by the way, this is a real video. This is right by Anaheim Stadium. OK, now, you know, Skid Row is also by a stadium. I think it's by the Staples Center. But this here looks to be much bigger than Skid Row. And Skid Row, you don't have as many tents and stuff like that, as far as I know. It's a lot of folks that's laying on the street. You got like shanty type situations. Basically, what you have in California is starting to become or it already is in many places like Brazil, where you got the favelas. And it's really a shame that you're going to have a place like that in the first world country in the USA. It's embarrassing, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I thought I saw poverty on the East Coast, but I've never seen any tent cities like this. I mean, not even in New York, Philadelphia. I mean, you don't see these tent cities. Maybe it's not enough housing. Maybe the housing is too expensive. I don't know what it is, but this is just really crazy. I mean, where's the public housing? Where is the, the, the churches to come in and give some kind of aid? Now, I'm not saying there are no churches, but I mean, how do we fix this problem? I think the problem with the tent cities is the crazy high taxes, the lack of places to live. You have a housing crisis, the influx of illegal immigration, taking up all the resources, natural disasters and the relief that has to go towards that. Uh, the debt of the state, the debt of the people is just really a mess. And I feel for the people that are out there in those tent cities. And I think tent cities not only exist in Orange County, but also exist in Sacramento. They also exist in Jefferson or the place that should be called Jefferson. They exist once you get further east into California, closer to Nevada. You have a lot of rural areas that are very poor and also urban areas that are very poor. just like what you saw in Orange County. Now, I hope that they're able to get some things going. And they mentioned my original state, my birthplace, West Virginia, uh, to give you a little bit of history about how West Virginia seceded. And why they seceded? First of all, they've been wanting to secede for a long time for many of the same reasons that California wants to break apart right now. It's because where I lived for a very long time after I left West Virginia, which is Hampton Roads, Virginia, which is right there on the East Coast, uh, West Virginia was very far away. I mean, it's far away now. Like I've driven from uh, the East Coast, Hampton Roads, you know, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk. I've driven from there to Charleston, West Virginia, which is like right in the center part of the state, closer to the south, but mostly like right in the center part of the state. Uh, to get from there to there is about six and a half hours driving. And that's over, you know, great roads, uh, engineering marvels with a vehicle, being able to drive over mountains and stuff like that through mountains, tunnels, bridges or whatever. So imagine how far that was in the 1700s with no vehicles and no gas. I mean, you might have a horse, <laughs> horse and chariot walking on foot uh, across mountain ranges, the Appalachians, which are, can be very treacherous, even with the roads being great the way they are right now. And West Virginia does have very good roads. I mean, it may be a poor state, but the roads are immaculate. Even with the roads being as good as what they are right now, it still can be very treacherous. Like once you get into Beckley and places like that, I mean, it's constant up and down moving. Imagine how that was on a horseback or on foot. It's very far away. So those counties that were part of Virginia at one point, counties that were very far out west were basically being neglected by the east part of the state because everybody was focused on Hampton Roads. You know, all the goods coming into the ports and leaving the ports, all the commerce happening right there. I mean, the furthest that any attention will be paid to is Richmond, which is only about an hour and a half to two hours away from Hampton Roads rather than six hours away in current day over mountains and stuff like that. There's no mountain ranges between Hampton Roads and Richmond, just a little bit of land and that's it. Maybe a couple of hills, but no mountains. Once you get to Roanoke, Lynchburg, all that, that's when the mountains start. And that's really where you see the divide in the counties begin. And it's the same thing going on with California. Uh, There's a lot of attention paid to L.A., San Francisco, and they pretty much dictate the way the entire state is ran, which is unfair because what makes sense for Los Angeles or what they think makes sense for Los Angeles does not make sense for the rest of the entire region. What's happening in California would be like if New York City determined what happened in Charleston, South Carolina. 
I mean, that's about how far you're talking about Northern California and Southern California is. So it was really unfair for such a large region, a very diverse region to be controlled by very small places. And I see the same thing happening in Virginia. I mean, Virginia is controlled basically by Northern Virginia. It's a very small region. The top uh, two or three counties in Northern Virginia, you're talking about Loudoun, uh, Fairfax, whatever, that are basically the Washington, D.C. suburbs. They control the fate of the entire Virginia. And Virginia is a big place. It's not as big as California, but it has a far reach. You're talking about the East Coast right there and Hampton Roads. Then you're talking about all the way far out west, close to Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Ohio, etc. It covers a pretty broad range and it's a pretty diverse region. So to have Northern Virginia control what goes on throughout the entire state is unfair. And I'm pretty sure people feel the same way when you're talking about New York City and people that live in Buffalo, Niagara Falls, Albany or whatever. It's unfair for this city, while it's very big and very powerful, very influential to make decisions that control the rest of the state. Now, I know when you're talking about capitals of a place, that's where laws are actually made. But let's just be honest here. When you're talking about people that get elected into office, who's going to have the most say so over that? Uh, the rural areas where it's kind of sparsely populated or a big chunk of the state's population being in one place. 33 percent of Virginia's population is in like two or three counties in northern Virginia. And you could say the same thing about New York. You could say the same thing about California. Well, not quite California. California is a bigger place. At the end of the day, as I close, I think California is too big to be controlled only by two cities. Break it up and have the coastal areas pretty much be able to do what they're going to do. You know, L.A. County, let that be L.A. County. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as say you should have something like Brunei or Kuwait, but maybe you should. Maybe you should have like a Singapore or a Hong Kong rather than have Hong Kong control what goes on over the entire mainland China, which would never happen, by the way. That would never, ever happen. Mainland China is going to control what happens in Hong Kong. Versus it being the other way around. But I digress. Rather than having that situation going on where Hong Kong could control mainland China, which is the same thing of L.A. controlling the entire California, have it be broken up to where you have each region with more autonomy. That just makes sense to me. It's fair. So if you don't want to engage in the whole sanctuary state kerfuffle, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can have your own rules. So if L.A. and San Francisco want to allow illegal immigrants into their place, you know, they're not going to check for papers or whatever. When you cross that line into Jefferson or when you cross that line into Southern California or East California, whatever the case may be, then it's going to be a different game. If you want to have tight gun control in San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, Vallejo, if you're going to go out that far, then, hey, when I'm up here in Redding, don't try to control what I'm doing. I should be able to have whatever kind of guns I want if that's what the people of that particular place want. So allow people like in Jefferson, like in East California, i.e. whatever, allow them to be governed by themselves, by people that live in that region rather than faraway places like L.A. or San Francisco that have zero in common with those regions. But whatever your thoughts are, whatever your two cents are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.